Hello friends of YouTube, um, this is going to be another care video. Um, this has been a long time coming, I just kind of haven't gotten around to it. Um, but I just redid their setup, so I figured I might as well do a video on these guys. Um, but these are not the usual isopods. These are in fact pill millipedes, um, glomerous to be specific. There's a bunch of different species in here. Um, but they evolved kind of the same look as uh, the pill mills and stuff. Um, convergent evolution and all that. Um, so I'll kind of uh, show you them and their setup. So this video will apply to um, pretty much all of the glomerous. Their, their, their care is all very similar. Um, in this tub is Pulchra, Ornata, Postulata, Undulata, and Tetrastica. Stica, I think is how it's said. Um, I have another tub that's mostly Marginata, and then another tub of Clue Guy, which I might show eventually. But this is my biggest tub. There's probably like 200 or so of them in here. Um, just all mixed species together, those, those uh, four or five species that I told you. Um, just because uh, that's how I got them. I might separate them out later, but uh, that time will come when that time comes. Um, once I get some more. Um, they've already started to have... Um, uh, my marginata have had babies already, so we'll see. So um, this is their overall setup. I'll show you their tub. Um, how many quarts is this? I might say it. I guess I ripped the sticker off so it doesn't say anymore. Let me see. Oh, wait. Uh, it's a container store one, so it does. What is this? 30 points. Yeah, 30.6 quarts. So um, pretty decent sized tub. It's got like, um, I think the actual substrate itself is like four inches or so, maybe. And then, um, so the substrate is composed. Um, so maybe if you saw my last video, you'll saw, see the stuff that I got from Dan Vivas. Um, that makes up the bulk of this substrate. There's one going right now. And that'll kind of tell you what the, the majority of it is. So it's, uh, it's that forest floor bedding that I got from Dan. Um, compost, just organic compost that I make in my own backyard, um, the leaves, and then lots of uh, rotting wood. Um, so there's rotting wood mixed in, there's like big chunks, and then there's also like the little stuff. And when I mean rotting, I mean like rotting, so like it should like fall apart in your hands almost, you know, um, if you squeeze it or anything. And then also I have moss on top of here, and then the bark on top is, uh, there's cherry, and then there's uh, valley oak. Um, and all different types of leaves. As many I got as many leaf types as I could. I got banana leaves, um, oak, elm, poplar, alder, ash, um, as much as I could in here. And um, I'll kind of get a better angle so we can see more of them. There's another one crawling up at the top. I have to get better at identifying them. I'm really uh, I'm really shit at it to be <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I don't know all the different types. I just know what I got and then I've had a friend I, like I, I got a second opinion from a friend about what I have and he's kind of more or less confirmed to me um, what I thought I had which is cool so I I got what I asked for which is nice um, but they're cute little guys um, love the pill millipedes there's one in there this little guy um, they come in a bunch of different colors and patterns, usually a variation of black and orange or black and red or black and yellow. Um, let me see if I can't find more in here. They really are. There's another one on that leaf there. Oh, there's some. Try and get out of the way. There's this guy right here. Whoop. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they're so they're so fun. Um, this is like a pillow moss type stuff that uh, I have on top here. Um, they seem to really quite enjoy this setup. Um, so care wise, so apart from like the substrate is really important. Like with isopods, like you can get away with a lot of isopod species just having like a cocoa fiber or peat moss with some a little bit of leaves on top, and that's what really all you need. Um, but with these guys, since they are millipedes, and millipedes are basically just fancy earthworms, um, you need a really rich substrate, because their their food is the substrate for the most part. They also eat vegetables and whatnot, 
um, which I'll get into later. But for the most part, the substrate is the food along with the moss and the leaves. That's your real, uh, that's the real base. That's what they're eating for the most part. Um, make sure wherever you're getting this stuff, you know, it's collected from a, a site that you trust, a place where um, there aren't any pesticides or anything like that. You don't want any nasties getting in here. Um, try and clear it out of any uh, predators you have. Like all the stuff I got from Dan, I'm pretty, or, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't get it from Dan Vivas. I got it from uh, Andrew Kiwa uh, over at Isopod Diner. That's where I got it from. Sorry. Sorry, Andrew or Dan, whoever watches this video. Um, yeah, so make sure you have all your stuff like free of uh, predators. You can bake it or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure Andrew bakes all of his stuff, so I didn't have to worry about that. But um, for my compost, I definitely had to. Um, I put it in like a dark black trash bag, and it got to almost 100 degrees today, so I just put that dark black trash bag onto my uh, my patio, and it got nice and hot. Um, killed anything that was in there. Um, apart from maybe a few springtails, but it, uh, there were some wild isopods in there. You don't want to mix isopods and pill millipedes. Um, generally speaking, especially if they're porcelio uh, isopods, they'll outcompete the pill millipedes since pill millipedes generally breed a good bit slower. Um, they're also a lot uh, more defenseless, um, especially as babies. The babies are really, really soft. So you definitely want to uh, avoid mixing the two. Um, a lot of people don't also like to, to mix different species, um, but I've found that mine, uh, they do just fine, uh, especially if you, you give them plenty of room. Like, this is a lot of room for the, um, even for 200 pill millipedes, this is, uh, this is a lot. There, there's no shortage of room in here for them. Um, I may upgrade them when the time comes or separate them, but we'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when we, when we cross that bridge. Um... So substrate moisture, you want it fairly damp, um, a little bit more uh, moist than you would isopods. Like you don't quite want to be able to like, like you should be able to squeeze like a couple drops of water out of it, but you shouldn't be able to like wring it out or anything like that. And one side is a little bit drier, but not by much. Um, ventilation, so it's got, so the top of this lid has like four corners that are like three square inches cut out and then one in the middle that's like four inches so like I'd say about 50 percent ventilation so 50 percent of it is open um, temperatures these guys like it cooler than most isopods they tend to thrive um, in like the 60s or uh, or even the 50s 50s 60s uh, very low 70s um, they could take it into the 80s um, but they they clearly like it cooler they breed much quicker um, are more active um, so you definitely want to try and uh, keep them on the cooler side. But they are very, very pretty little guys, and I love them so much. Um, also, uh, what was I going to say? So there's different pill millipede species. So like um, the ones from like Madagascar and Africa and a lot of Asia have a bad reputation for dying in captivity. Because they have something we haven't figured out, like either a bacteria or um, a fungi that they need or something in the wild that we can't provide them in captivity. And they don't live. Um, there's also the, the there's the time millipedes, the uh, Rapalomaris. Uh, I'll put it in the description. I forget exactly how to say it and how to pronounce it, but I, I know how it, how it looks. It starts with an R. It kind of sounds similar to glomerous. And those, um, they serve, they, they breed very slowly, but they can actually be raised in captivity. Hi, Taco. Taco says hi. Um, but yeah. So otherwise, care isn't all that much super different from isopods, just apart from those, those little differences in, in quality of substrate and moisture. Um, also the temperature. But there are some species of isopods that like cooler temperatures too. Um, but yeah, um, if anybody has any questions, I guess we'll try and get some more uh, close-ups of them and stuff. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. Um, I'll be happy to answer any. And um, also, just as an FYI, I will have a good amount of these guys for sale at the upcoming San Jose Reptile Show um, at the Santa Clara County Fairgrounds. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss that show. That show will be a lot of fun. Um, I'll have a lot of good stuff there. I'll be bringing uh, quite a few rare species of isopods. There's also going to be a couple other isopod sellers. Um, like, uh, I believe Spencer Tedesco is going to be there. 
and Stephen Huang. Um, very nice people. I, I recommend buying from them too. Um, and then my buddy Jeff Leverett, he also has a few different types of isopods. He'll be there. Um, yeah, and uh, if people saw my recent uh, video on isopod uh, regulations, you should definitely check that out um, just to be informed. Um, I'm also researching about these too, and I believe these also require an APHIS permit. Um, although Dr. Bonko hasn't quite gotten back to me on that, so we, we, we'll, sh we'll see. Um, although I suspect that to be the case. So, uh, yeah, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and um, have a great night. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, like, comment, share, subscribe. And, uh, yeah, stay cool. Happy keeping.